It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. Hello, my name is Tyrone Lowe. I'm your host, owner of T. Lowe Vito Productions. And in the house of the legends, I have a legend, D-Train. How you Welcome doing to today, bro? Good to see you, man. How you doing, man? Wonderful. Wonderful. Man, I've been following you for years, man. I got some <laughs> stories behind you, too, man. You know, uh, being up in Prelude. Oh, know? okay. But, James, let's talk about the beginning. You know, what really got you to singing? And I know that before you actually got signed to Prelude, uh, you was probably doing other things. So let's talk, let's talk about that with the viewers. Well, I started singing when I was like about six years old at Washington Temple Church of God in Christ over there on Bedford and, and Bergen Street in Brooklyn under Bishop Washington. Ronnie Dyson okay, Ronnie, was yeah. our uh, choir director. Al Sharpton was our junior church minister. Okay. And uh, so we grew up in that big mega church all my life. And then my first professional recording mm. was at 15 years old. Right. When the uh, Reverend Timothy Wright came to the church, we okay. did a song called Victories in the Praise over in Manhattan. All right. And he, he had to go get permission from my mom. <laughs> Can James stay home from school today just to say this? Right. I went to the studio and re-recorded it. And that was my first professional recording. And after getting into Erasmus High School, playing right. football, uh, I met Will Downing. And one day, you know, the chapel in Erasmus was like the Holy Grail. Right, exactly, you know? yeah. It was the mm -hmm. sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And I go there, and Will's sitting down on the piano playing him and this guy named Joseph Williams. Mm -hmm. And I just remember all the girls in the boosters, the fine-looking girls were just all around the piano. I was like, I want to do what he does. Right. I want to be just <laughs> like him. Right, I hear you. And so we introduced ourselves, and he got me into the, uh, to the music academy there at Erasmus with, with uh, Miss Fleischer, got me in the chorus. Right. And then he got me to do the plays, uh, the South, South Pacific, where I had to give up a piece of myself because... I had to put on a blonde wig, lipstick, and wow. coconuts and a grass skirt, and oh. I'm the captain of the football team. Oh, okay. That was a challenge. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure it was. But, you know, when you play good, you can live it down. Right. <laughs> but it was fun, and uh, he introduced me to the music of Earth, Wind, and Fire, George Duke, and Stanley Clark. Okay. And our friendship grew over the years. Okay. And then he was doing, when I graduated, he was still in Erasmus, and he was still doing demos and writing songs for Melba Moore and people like that. Right. Uh, he was doing a song called The Real Deal Demo out of okay. Sound Lab Studios on East 14th Street. Yeah, okay. Where we recorded all exactly. the D-Train albums. Yeah, right, okay. And um, I met Hubert Eves there mm -hmm. that afternoon, and Hubert was eating Chinese food, and it was funny. He was just coming in all cool, because they were like, this is the guy that plays for Roberta Flack. This is the guy that does this. He's with him to me. I was like... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, but do you I didn't know who they actually were? Right. I, I, I didn't know anybody. Because those are big names. Right. I was just a kid from Brooklyn. And right. I, I grew up in the church, so I was kind of isolated. Right. Um, so after the session was over, you know, Hubert asked Will, he was like, can, can you get his number for me, please? Okay. <laughs> so Will got my number, and Hubert and I got together at his house. And uh, he said, man, I got this track, man. And I don't know if you hear it. Do you write? And I said, yeah, I like to write. He mm -hmm. goes, okay, listen to it. So he puts it on. It was like, dun, 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 right. dun. I'll stand up on the cloud right. and shout out loud. That was all he had. Right. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. play it again. So he played it again. I said, give me a pad. Give me a pad. So I gave him that. With this new love I found, makes my feet up off the cast. So right. we wrote You're the One for Me. I guess it took us about an hour. Okay. And then I think, I believe, if my memory serves me correct, we wrote Keep On the same day. Okay. And so, and our, our writing juices, and we just gelled like that as soon as we met as songwriters and musicians. The chemistry just flowed. It just, yeah. the chemistry was there. Mm -hmm. And um, it stayed there for five albums, man. We got through three albums on Prelude and two on Columbia. You know, it's, it's funny because, um, like I said before, I used to go pick up at Prelude every mm. week. And... Um, <laughs> My man was there, you know, and he was the A&R 
okay. back in the, you know, there. And George Bonnet? Like, right, George. And he was mm -hmm. like, Ty, why don't you listen to this record? <laughs> right? And he gave me stuff from like Unlimited, to, you know, the whole Prelude family oh, I yeah. used to go pick up. And uh, he said, I want you to listen to this. Mm. So I listened to it, and he was like, I said, what's the name of that? Because it was different. <laughs> right. You know, it was like, disco was like dying down at that time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But when you came out with that particular type of track, it was like intermediate between both, but it was like right. weaning away from disco, actually. Mm -hmm. And I heard it. So I said, he's like, man, he said, you playing tonight, right, Ty? I said, yeah. He said, well, take this with you. <laughs> And I took it with me. I played it like two or three times that night. Even though they danced to it, it was mm. kind of like you still had to get into it. Right, right, because it was new. But when I played the dub mm. version, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. That song just took over. Right. You know, uh, Frankie, that Frankie, uh, Frankie, um, uh, Frankie, the, Cra Frankie Cracker was playing it. He oh was yeah, Frankie. It oh yeah. I on, mean, what uh, happened when we first when we first put it out and took it up to Frankie? Mm -hmm. Or rather, when Hubert took it to Frankie. Right. I wasn't with him the first time. Okay. And so we were driving down Atlantic Avenue, going to the radio station to do the interview. Right. And Frankie was playing the dub version. Yeah. I, I thought Hubert took me off the record. Oh, so no. I was, I'm sitting in the car, I'm looking remix. at him like, it's a remix. Yo, man, really? You, I didn't know about remixes. I'm from the church. Oh, I was like, okay, like, okay. What's a remix? Well, why'd you take me off the record? You didn't like the way my voice sounded. And... He said, no, man, no, 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 that's the B-side, that's the B-side, yeah, that's yeah. the dub version. I said, that's the dub version. And man. it was years later that I learned what a dub version was. Right, but okay. Frankie loved it, and we got up there, and we did the interview with Frankie, and the rest is history. We took it to uh, the Paradise Garage the same night. And I heard to, when to Larry, Larry played it in the garage, because there's yeah. nothing like that sound system. Yeah, You can oh hear God. bells, ticks, yeah. whatever, yeah. that system. That's because, true. Because uh, the... the uh, the Paradise Garage system was quadraphonic, oh, so yeah. it gave a whole different sound. Oh yeah. And um, I've heard when he played the then there. Oh yeah. That song just took off. Yeah. But then you uh, let's talk about Keep On because yeah. that was another big hit for you. Yeah, Keep On. What's interesting about it when we wrote it, we were just trying to write a positive song. Okay. We had no way that it would last as long or any of our music over the years and have such a positive effect on so many It became many such people. like a national anthem right. being positive. A, a person, don't quit. Right. That's the message behind it. The message right. behind it was so devastating. Right. And uh, some other songs follow behind it with the right. same thing. Right. Now, we talk about Tony Lee. Right. Because I had Tony Lee on the show. We talked about that. Mm. You know, and mm -hmm. um, how those two songs became such, such a positive outlet. Right. That's true. You know, Very stuff true. like that. But what happens is, for the time that we were coming up in, I mean, we went to clubs. You can go to five different clubs in one night. You had the Silver Shadow up on 57. Right, exactly. You had the Underground on 14th Street, Roseland, you know, Paradise Garage. You name it. You could just go through Manhattan right. and go to a club one right after the other. If one wasn't popping, you go to the next one. Okay. And we played every club in the city. We were doing two and three shows a night, mm -hmm. even up in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting was, I met Jocelyn Brown at the Copacabana. It's funny okay. that you said that right. earlier. Yeah. Um, the, when you went into these clubs, everybody was dancing. The floor was packed. Everybody, you know, it's unlike today where we live in social media society. When you go into a club, a lot of kids are sitting there texting. Right. <laughs> you know, it's just a but different But what we're going to do right now, James, is we're going to go on a break. Okay. And we'll be right back. Cool. Y'all come back and stay tuned, and we'll be right back with the legendary D-Train. It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. My assignment, my calling is to inspire, uplift. You have to make sure your people are partying. All I want to do is just bring joy to the dance floor and watch people dance. <laughs> see, no, see, no, see, no, see, no. Hi, my name is Tyrone Lowe, and I'm back with the legendary D-Train. James, let's talk about uh, how did you get hooked up with Prelude? Well, you know what was very strange was I was very young. I was 19. Right. Hubert Eze was a little bit more aware of what was going on in the business. So he had taken the demos to Warner Brothers, the Capitol, the RCA, all of those labels that were hot at the time, Columbia. Right. Mm -hmm. And all of them, not one of them liked my voice. Really? They all said, take him off and put a girl on there. Take him off the record. If, if you can get somebody, he's singing too hard, he's singing too loud, just right. take him off, put a girl on there. 
And so Hubert was like, no, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. And so he wound up at Prelude, and he played it for uh, Marvin Schlachter. Okay. And Marvin called in Joey Bonner. He says, Joey, come in here. So mm -hmm. Joey comes in. So he puts the record on. He says, that's our new single. <laughs> okay. And, you know, I'm 19 years, years old getting right. signed to Prelude Records the next week, the following mm -hmm. week. And that's how we wound up with Prelude. They believed in us, Marvin and Stan Hoffman and Joey Bonner. And uh, it was a wonderful experience. You know, we went through three albums with them. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and then it was time to move on to Columbia. You know, um, let's talk about Barnes International because oh, that's yeah. when you made your first debut. Yeah. I was there. It was New Year's wow. Eve. Wow. Wow. Uh, Kenny Carpenter was a the DJ then. Okay. Right there. And uh, God bless the dead. My friend that lived to live around the corner from me, Calvin Matthews, was one of your dancers. Oh, yes. Yes. Calvin he, went to Erasmus. Right. Yes. May he rest in peace. Yeah, Calvin went all over Brooklyn with Right, us. exactly. Yeah. I yeah. seen the show that night. It was phenomenal because oh, thank um, you. everybody wanted to see D-Train because that song was so hot. Yeah. So we're going to move on. Let's talk about Something on Your Mind. Something's on Your Mind was very funny. We wrote it in Hubert's living room. Okay. He had a little tiny Casio keyboard, and he was sitting up there going, dun, 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 dun. Mm. And he was just doing that all afternoon. And so I came over to the house. And I said, what are you doing? He was eating up there and everything. I said, yo, man, is it cool if you eat upstairs? I don't want you to get in no trouble with <laughs> you. He said, no, I got this thought in my head, man. I just got to do it. Right. And um, he was playing on a Casio keyboard. So then we started writing. You know, I believe something. Right. And he had a little drum machine inside right, of the keyboard. Okay. Yeah. We wrote You're the One for Me in his living room upstairs on Ralph Avenue in Jefferson. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, baby. Yeah. And I had no idea, once again, you know, through the grace of God, um, when the song came out, it went up to top five and crossed over yeah. to the R&B charts. And I was like, whoa, top 100 pop. Okay, this is kind of cool. You know, it's something, because when I heard something on my mind, um, it really, I heard a little bit of Paul McCartney in it because mm. it gave me that type of flavor right. when you sung it. Right. You know, and that's the first thing that came to my head. You know, you've been around for a while, man, and you're still doing your thing. Yeah, You know, uh, that night I saw you at um, Ashford and Simpson's uh, Sugar restaurant, Bar. Sugar Bar. I was yeah. like, got to get James on the show, <laughs> you know, and things of that nature, man. Uh, so, you know, for the upcoming artists that's coming up right now, mm -hmm. do you have any suggestions for them? Absolutely. Um, do your homework and know your history. You never know where you're going to unless you know where you come from. Right. So many of our young people... They come out with new records, and their, their, their reference, as far back as they can go from, mm -hmm. from their birth, is probably Alicia Keys' Beyonce. Um, maybe the Mary Jane Girl, no, not even the Mary Jane Girls, I'd say 702. Okay. Would be considered old school to right, them. Right, right. Um, Boys to Men is old school to them, right. to the millennials to them. Mm -hmm. They may not want to hear that, but, it, you know, that's what it is. That was music coming out um, at the time. I'm old school to boys to men. Right, You right. know, guy is old school to that. So, and that's what, if you know your history, go back. Go back a little bit further. Learn about Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. Learn about James Brown and, and Otis Redding. Right. Because these are the people, when you learn that who your founding fathers are, you can create something new oh, and most, third most dimensional. Oh, yes. And what happens is that's one smart thing about Puff. He would go back. He would study Ashford and Simpson. He would study D-Train. He would listen to all these brilliant artists. And then he'd just put, come up with his own thing and put a rap down. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty much what he did. He went through the crates. Yeah, he sure did. He went through the crates, mm -hmm. did his homework, and put the records out and became a billionaire. Let's talk about you in Europe because oh, Europe is crazy for you. I love Europe. And um, speaking of Europe... Uh, Lonnie, Lenny Fontana, because boy. we both play on the same radio station, LWR in the UK. Okay. And um, he had sent me your first track he did with you, then he sent me the second track, mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, wow, you know. Um, how did you hook up with Lenny? I hooked up with Lenny through a mutual friend of ours, Darren Sainz, who lives in Long Island. Mm -hmm. Darren was, he wasn't my neighbor, wasn't Lenny's neighbor, but he lived in Long Island, and I met him through Leighton Delgado. Mm -hmm. um, so one day he took me over to Lenny's house, mm -hmm. and uh, he introduced the two of us together, and me and Lenny just formed a bond, you know? Right. It's like certain people you meet, it's like, man, he's cool, you know? And I looked at the studio, I was like, wow, the Neve board. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> 
we always worked on Neves back in the day. There was only two type of boards right. that you mixed on, either SSL or Neves. You exactly. didn't have all these different options. Right, out. right. And after meeting Lenny, we did three, three songs together. Uh, Invincible, Raise Your Hands Up, and then, you know, uh, f um, When You Feel What Love Has For You. And all three of them gained moderate success. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the highest of the three being When You Feel What Love Has gained European success. Right. Um, and it just goes to show that when the chemistry is right and the yeah. song is right and the production is right. Because he has comic on fire. Oh, yeah. Because he's sending me stuff all the time. He's a great you know. He's always sending me stuff. And shout out to you, Lenny. Yeah, man. Uh, I never met you personally, but uh, you're my LWR buddy. And um, thank you. <laughs> well, Lenny, I met you personally. I like you, your wife and the dog and your beautiful daughter, Sam. But anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about some future events that you're going to be doing. Absolutely. Uh, I'll be in Greece okay. this summer. Um, I'm performing over there. Um, and then in July, I'm doing Chicago, okay. the festival in the park with uh, Strafe, I believe. And then September is the O2 Indigo. That's going to be the big one. Okay. With myself, Evelyn Champagne King, okay. uh, Melba Moore, and um, Robin S., and okay. Alexander O'Neill. Oh, Robin S., I haven't heard from her in a while. Oh, yeah, and Alexander O'Neill. Okay. So that's going to be fun. And um, but Alexander, is he still in, he's still in Europe, right? Yes. Okay. I believe so. Yeah. I think he goes back and forth. Right, okay. But, yeah, predominantly in London. And so tell the viewers how they can get in contact with you, you know, your email address and things of that nature. Absolutely. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can contact me at dtrainismusic at gmail.com. D train is music, all one word, lowercase, at gmail.com. <laughs> so, you know, um, it's a pleasure to have you on my show, man. And, thank you, um, my brother. I'm just loving it. This is like a dream come true because well, thank you. when I, back in the days when I was playing your music, I had no idea that I would actually meet you in person. <laughs> and I've seen you around right. because the last picture we took together was at Union Square Ballroom. Wow. When Do Don Welch. Was it Don Welch? Don Welch did a, oh, okay. a production there. Okay. And I was there that night. Um, actually, I was the guy that was uh, doing all the TV show tracks for, ah, the, for, the, for, gotcha. the, for the people that was night. Was that when Colonel was there? When the Colonel was there. Yeah, I remember And that. that's when Colonel came on the floor in acapella yeah, and just yeah, rocked yeah. the crowd. Yeah, yeah. He I just, <laughs> you know, he does his thing. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> but like I said, man, thank you for coming through, man. Thank and you, um, Thank you. Uh, I like to produce you a track. If I may, I will call you and let you, you know, keep, you know, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it, cool, and stuff cool. like that. Actually, right now I'm doing something for for Russell from um, Black Ivory. Nice. And um, it's not finished yet, but it will be. Okay. And stuff, and uh, I like to I like to collaborate with you as well. Wonderful, stuff, man. I'm always up for collaboration. All these old school people, mm -hmm. y'all need to take learning lessons from, mm -hmm. and. Um, try to get with them, you know, because they got so much to give, you know, and things of that nature. Like D-Train's been around for a long time, and if you don't know him, Google him or go to YouTube and listen to some of their music and things of that nature. And listen, man, it's good to have you on my show. It's time for Thank us to wrap it up. Okay. And you guys stay tuned for a live performance by the legendary James d -Tray Williams. Thank you. down the street and I start to cry each time we meet. walk on by walk on by make me mean that you don't see the tears so let me grieve in private cause each time I see you I break down and cry 
Walk on by. Walk on by. Yeah, yeah. Walk on by. Oh, I just can't get over losing you. So if I see broken in two, walk on by. Whoa, walk on by. Foolish pride is all that I have. So let me hide the tears and the sadness you gave me when you said goodbye. Yeah. Walk on by, make believe you don't see your tears in my eyes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Walk on by, make believe you don't see your tears in my eyes. Don't you walk away from me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you see me walking. On the street, hey baby, and I cry each time that we meet. Listen, listen, make believe, make believe, make believe you don't see tears rolling down, rolling down my cheeks, yeah. I'll stand up on top and shout out loud, you're the one for me. With your love by my side, the world will be mine, you're the one for me. With this new love I found, takes my feet up off the ground and fly away. With this new love, my dear, takes away my every fear, don't go away. You just don't know what you did to me, but I'm not saying. Since you gave me love and shelter from the rain, you just don't know how you make me feel. Your sweet love, girl, is so unreal. I got love, love, desire since you love. A soul on fire I stand up on the cloud And shout out loud You're the one for me With your love by my side My world will be mine You're the one for me I'm riding on a cloud Got to shout it out loud You're my own Baby, hold on tight for the rest of my life, don't let me fall. You just don't know what you did to me. I'm not saying. 
since you gave me love and shelter from the rain. You make me feel your sweet love. love. Girl, it's so unreal. I got love, I got love. love desire from your loving. My soul's on fire. I stand up on the cloud and shout out loud. You're the one for me. With your love by my side, the world will be mine. You're the one for me. I'll stand up on the cloud and shout out loud, you're the one for me. With your love by my side, the world will be mine, you're the one for me. Here we go! One more time. Tyrone Low, where you at? Are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Inside of me, we could turn this world around. We could live through all eternity, and we never touch the ground. We'll take a chance to ride upon stuff to a place that far away. The line of love will shine on us forever and a day. With the love I have inside of me, we could turn this world around. We could live through all eternity, we never touch the ground. We'll take a chance to ride upon stuff to a place that far away. The line of love will shine on us forever and a day. With the love of hand, we can turn this world. We can live through all, and we never touch. Take a chance to ride to a place that far. The light of love will shine on us forever. With the love of hand, we can turn this world. We can live through all eternity and never touch. Take a chance to ride to blaze it far away. The light of love will shine on us forever. You're the one for me. You're the one for me. I got to stand up for your love. I got to stand up for your love. Yeah, for your love, I got to stand up for your love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house.